Good. Yeah. Having contact with the earth, I think. Actually walking on the land, seeing the land go by at a natural pace. I mean, this is, this is the pace we should live at, I think. Without, you know, without engines and, and contraptions and that. I find, yeah, if you're travelling in a vehicle, it, it's just, it's not a natural pace to travel at, so you can't... I find I can't connect with the places that I'm travelling through. You get in at one end, you whiz through everything, and then you get out at the other end, and you're not quite sure where you are sometimes. If you get in here and got out in London, there's just all that land in between that you haven't seen, haven't, haven't even touched, you've just been floated along. <laughs> Sorin on the bed and then this here is our sort of living area and the burners what we have on to keep us warm in the winter and we um, cook on that as well and then during the summer time we cook in the little kitchen area just here and then all our clothes are kept in the drawers and there's a really large sort of storage area underneath the bed <laughs> What I've got here is my clothes basket, Elks books, Elks toys, my books, my special basket of special little things, essential oils and stuff like that, and food under here, and my bed, and that's all I need. Uh, yeah, I don't want for anything else really, I'm really comfortable, and uh, I've got everything that I need. This is just my bedroom really, um, it's where I sleep and it's, it's my own personal space, that is mine. But uh, as for the rest of my home, it's, it's basically the fire. That's where everybody meets around for the evening meal. That's where everything's centred. That's, yes, yeah, the dining room and, and the kitchen and the living room. And uh, this is where I come and run and hide. Hold on to it. So if you get something posted tomorrow to any post office, you can go and pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm going down on Tuesday. Um, yeah, and that's as far as I've got, really. Many mega places. Yeah. yeah. Heading up towards Brendan Hills the next morning, that. And taking the hilly route down to Devon. <laughs> I'm up for sharing. That's fine. As long as it, as long as it um, doesn't. Doesn't it doesn't become somebody's space because then yeah. that, that's like know. the altar of the field isn't it but well, I think a lot of the people here started off like meeting each other at the Twyford Down Road protest and then went on to the Salisbury Hill Road protest where I met them and having done sort of two and then maybe even going on to another couple of road protests it's, it's a very tiring thing and rather than saying no to something they wanted to say yes to something and Although road protesting is positive, to be positive in another way by saying, yes, we want to live on the land, we want to live sustainably and in harmony with the earth. So by getting the horses and travelling with wagons and horses and donkeys and goats, it's a positive thing, showing a positive lifestyle and how you can live while still respecting the earth. All right then. All right then. it's not a step backwards at all it's a step forwards really because the way people are living today can't continue it's it's non-renewable the, the resources people are 
using nowadays, they're going to run out, you know, oil's going to finish and coal's going to finish, there's going to be no, no, you know, gas powered, whatever, there's going to be no cars, they can't, they can't run cars off petrol forever, so, you know, this is, this is the old way of living, but it's also, it's the only way really, it's the only way that can, can carry on. It's a nice clean material, there's, there's no waste, there's no pollution and there's not many craft these days that are completely pollution free. I like that part of it. And it's useful in making something practical, something that's, that's always going to get used and something that will last. You know, these will last for years once they're made. Because at school they split everything up, but in reality it's all one thing. To put some food in a pan and stick some water on it, make the fire and put it on the fire and all that kind of thing. You're learning all about chemistry and physics, you know. It's all there, but you don't necessarily always get that, especially these days because people just stick a packet in the microwave and they don't even see what's happening to the food, you know. It's just, they can't relate to it, so they're a completely different level. One's what we call the idle, idle lot who are just out to get what they can, and there's this sort that will actually earn their living. So there's no, no problem with these, none at all. It's the one who's park on your drive. <laughs> well, that's not for me, my dear. I wouldn't do it for choice, naturally, but I think that's the, the way they like. So be it. Very good. I have no objection. They seem to be rather layabouts to me. Rather um, unclean sort of people. I'm sure there many of them are very nice, but to us and they're going down the street it's because they know you know they, there is a knowing that they're living their life for nothing you know they're working and working and working and what's it for it's all for ego it's all for my house my car and they don't want to be doing that and they see us and they see us smiling and laughing and and they know and so I think a lot of people's feelings for, towards travelers are because of that is because it's a freedom travelers and gypsies throughout time of, and nomads have always represented freedom you know because they're not tied down to a mortgage It's an outrage, it's, it's totally taken away anybody's indigenous rights in this country. They're basically saying you're not allowed to be free. If you're going to live in Britain, then you're going to pay taxes, you're going to have an address and, and you're going to conform, you're going to have a job and, and all the rest of it. So 
you know, we've, we've got to defy it, otherwise we'll have nothing left, otherwise we'll just become part of, of all the crap that's going on out there, so... You know, they've, they've brought this in to try and, to try and criminalise us, basically. TV programme I've ever watched. Cool, yeah. And uh, recently, it's the time of year where you just get millions of shooting stars. And I was just sitting out here the other night, just playing my whistle and uh, looking up at the sky. And in one little, one little space, I just had seven shooting stars. It, it was just so beautiful. I bet they're from Joshies, yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> So heading heading west, and on the way down there is uh, uh, a road protest site that's been there for a long time at Fairmile. They're facing eviction soon. We won't stop there for a long. Initially going past, but I dare say a lot of people will, will come back and help them out when they need it. What you really need when there's a totally unjust law is for as many people to stand up and say no, this is wrong. So that's what's important is numbers of people really. No provisions made for, for people to travel, to be nomadic. There's, a, there's no indigenous culture here. It's, they're trying to suppress it, they always have done. But it's, it's always there. <laughs> and it always will be, I think. You can't stop people, it's like trying to stop water. It'll just find a way round. <laughs> <laughs> 